This is quiz 26. And in problem number one, we have to figure out, um, well, it's kind of a word problem. The sum of two positive numbers is 16. What's the smallest possible value of the sum of the squares? And show your work. Okay, so we have two positive numbers that add together to give you 16. The sum of two positive numbers is 16. So what we can do is we can say let x be one of them and y be the other one. So let x and y be the two positive numbers. And then what they tell us in that first sentence is that the sum of these two numbers, x plus y, has to come out to be 16. Okay, but then they say, what's the smallest possible value of the sum of their squares? <clears throat> well, this is where we get the clue or the information about what the problem is really asking. So this is a max-min problem, an optimization problem. In particular, it's a minimization problem. So we want to minimize something. And you should write that down. Minimize what? Well, you read the problem again. The smallest possible value of the sum of their squares. Well, that would mean these two numbers squared and added together. Minimize x squared plus y squared. Okay, and that's our problem. Find the minimum value of the sum of the two squares. The problem is that there's two variables here and we don't really know how to minimize a function of two variables. However, we have more information and that's given by this. So because we have this, this constraint, you might say, this constraint is a relationship between the x and the y. Because you can't just change x without making y change because of the fact that they have to add together to give you 16. So what that means is that x and y depend on each other, so you can eliminate one or the other. So let's eliminate y. So from this equation, we can say that y must be equal to 16 minus x. And so what we're really trying to minimize is x squared plus 16 minus x squared. <clears throat> Okay, we also need to note that these are positive numbers, and so what that means is that there will be endpoints. x must be greater than or equal to 0, and y must be greater than or equal to 0. So it's good to note that, because those might end up being the critical numbers that we're looking for. Okay, but in this case, uh, that may not happen. We're supposed to minimize this. So this is the sum of the squares. And to minimize this, we need to take into consideration the endpoints and then all the critical numbers. So if this is the sum, then we take the derivative of it to figure out where the critical numbers are. So the derivative of this function of x would just be 2x, derivative of x squared, plus, now I could multiply this out, but that's too much work. I'm just going to use the chain rule and take the derivative of that. So it's 2 times 16 minus x to the first. I don't have to write that, but the chain rule says you've got to multiply by the derivative of what's inside, which is simply negative 1. So let's rewrite that to simplify it. 2x plus 32 minus 2x, oops, <laughs> times negative 1. That was a little too fast there. Okay, so this is going to be 2x minus 32 plus 2x. So that's 4x minus 32. Okay, so this is the derivative. And if we think about setting that equal to 0 to figure out what the critical numbers are, then obviously x equals 8 is going to be our critical number. Okay, so now is that a max? Is it a min? Is it neither? And there's 50 ways to do that. If we analyze 4x minus 32, 32, we could figure out pretty quickly that when x is bigger than 8, this quantity is positive. When x is less than 8, this quantity is negative. So that means for bigger than 8, we have positive. For less than 8, we have negative. So this number, x equal to 8, is going to be a min. Another way we could do this is we, so we could take the second derivative. The second derivative is the derivative of this guy, which would just be 4. 
that tells us that the function that we're dealing with is concave up. So it's going to have a critical point only at the base of the um, curve. So this is going to have to be a min. And in fact, if you look at the function, which is s, it's a quadratic. And so it's definitely going to be looking like a parabola. And the leading coefficient is going to be 2. So, so it has to look like this. And so the critical point is right there at the bottom, which is going to be a min. And so x equals 8 is the value. So once we know x equals 8, we go back and say, well, what's y? Well, <laughs> obviously y is 8. So this is it. 8, 8 plus 8 is 16. And the minimum value for the sum of the squares will be when x, x and y are both 8. So that's 64 and 64 for 128. Let's just try another value just for fun. If you just change this a little bit and made x 9, that would mean that y would have to be 7. And if you take the sum of the squares, then you'd get 81 plus 49. And 81 and 49 is what? Uh, it's 10, 5, 130. So what would, what did we have before? We had 64 and 64 is 128. So that's less than 130. Any way you do this, if you take two numbers to add up to 16, if you don't choose 8 and 8 for the two numbers, you will find that the squares added together give you more than what you get with 8 and 8. Okay, so much for problem one. Next problem. We're supposed to take a piece of wire that's 10 meters long <clears throat> and cut it into two pieces. So let's say that we cut it right here. And I'll say that that's x from here to there. And it's 10 meters long. So if it's 10 from here to there, then this piece over here would have to be 10 minus x because they have to add together to give you a total of 10. Now, there are other ways of doing this, and, and in class, some of you came up with other approaches that, that worked, and that's fine. Um, so you're going to take one piece and bend it into a square, and the other into an equilateral triangle. So I'm going to take this piece and bend it into a square. So that means that each of the sides is the same, and each of the sides would be x divided by 4, because I've got four of them over here. And then this piece gets bent into an equilateral triangle. So each piece there is going to be 10 minus x over 3 in length. And I've got three of them. OK. How should the y be cut so that the total area enclosed is a maximum? So there's our problem, is to maximize total area. And the total area will be the area of this square plus the area of this triangle. So the part of that's easy. The area of the square is length times width. So that's the same thing, x over 4 times x over 4, or x squared over 16, plus the area of this triangle, which is, of course, 1 half base times height. Part of that's easy. The base is 10 minus x over 3. But what's the height? We have to figure out what that is. Well, we need to know something about this triangle in order to figure that out. And the fact is that if this is an equilateral triangle, then all the angles are also equal to each other, which means that they have to being having to add up to 180 means that each of them must be 60, because 3 times 60 is 180. So <clears throat> if these are three equal angles, and they're 60, and this height here is perpendicular, then that makes this little guy in here a 30-60 triangle. And we know about they're all about 30-60 triangles. We know that the side opposite the 30 is going to be half the hypotenuse. Well, that's easy to see, half of this. 
but the height, this guy, the long side, the side opposite the 60, is going to be square root of 3 over 2 times the hypotenuse. So it tells us that h is square root of 3 over 2 times 10 minus x over 3. So that allows us to plug that in here. And so our total area is going to be x squared over 16 plus 1 half times 10 minus x over 3 times square root of 3 over 2 times 10 minus x over 3. And in this problem on the quiz, it says you only have to draw a picture, find a function of one variable that's to be maximized, and identify its domain. You don't have to do any calculus. So the next step would be calculus, but let's go ahead. We never did the domain for this function. So how big can x get and how small can x get? Well, that's pretty easy. The smallest that x could get is 0, so it's got to be bigger than or equal to 0. And making x equal to 0 means that <clears throat> you don't build a square at all. And you can make x as big as 10, which would mean that you're building the whole thing as a square, and then there's no triangle. Okay, But this is our domain. This function is kind of nasty, but, well, it looks kind of nasty, but it really isn't. This is just a quadratic and we could multiply all this out and figure out what it is um, but that's not really a, a good thing to do right now because that wasn't the question so we can leave it at that and that's it really for quiz 26